What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and in this video I'm going to show you step by step on how you can build yourself a $500 gaming PC with a fresh install of Windows. This PC will get you 60 FPS and high settings in most games, but if you want to see the full benchmarks, make sure to check out the video I did on the channel and I'll drop a link to it down below. So first up, you will need the parts obviously, I'll link them all down below, and it's also nice to have some sort of a container to keep the loose screws inside, along with a large surface area to work with. And finally, the last thing you're going to need is a screwdriver. Step 1 is to take apart all of the side panels from the case, two on the sides and one on the top. There should be two thumb screws holding each side panel together. Once all of the screws are off, pull out all three of the side panels. As I mentioned before, I recommend keeping these screws in a separate container so that you don't lose them. Take apart the tied cables and remove the bag that has the installation screws inside. Pull out the motherboard box and take out the following. The IO shield, Wi-Fi module connector, two SATA cables, two antennas and of course the motherboard itself. Remove the board from the plastic bag, but keep the pink foam underneath it and place it on top of the box. We are going to install the CPU next, so take that out of the box along with a stock heatsink. You don't need to apply thermal paste because the cooler already comes pre-applied with some, as you can see. However, if you're using a cooler and don't have thermal paste on it, then you need to buy one and put some on the CPU. I did leave a link to a really good thermal compound down below that I use for all of my builds. Grab the CPU from the sides, do not touch the surface of the CPU, otherwise it will pick up some dirt and oil from your fingers. Align the CPU so that the gold triangle on the processor matches with the black triangle on the socket cover. Once you've figured out the orientation, pop open the CPU cover by pressing down on the lever and gently lay the CPU on the socket. Whatever you do, do not apply any force. It should easily fall in place. Once the CPU falls in place, make sure that it is fully seated, and you can do that by checking the two notches on each of the sides. Gently lower the cover and press down on the lever and lock it in place. Don't freak out if the cover pops off, it's supposed to do that. Now we're going to install the RAM stick. If you have only one RAM stick, then open up one of the slots. If you have two, well, you get the idea. Match the gap on the RAM stick with the notch on the RAM slot and simply insert it in and apply some force until you hear it click. Now we're going to install the CPU cooler. You have to match the four holes on the motherboard to the four pins on the cooler. Position the cooler so that the Intel logo is right side up and gently lower it while aligning the four pins with the motherboard holes. Once the cooler is resting on the CPU, press down on the four pins one at a time until you hear it click. Once you are done, just pull on the cooler a bit to see if anything is loose. Grab the white connector from the heatsink and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which should be located right above the RAM slots. Now we are going to put the motherboard inside the case, so go ahead and grab the plastic bag with all the screws inside and remove it from the larger bag. These are the four screws that you will need to install the motherboard in the case. But before we do that, we need to install the IO shield, so make sure the three circles are facing towards you while you insert it inside the back of the case where the cutout is. Make sure to apply pressure on all four corners until the shield snaps in place. If you did it correctly, it should sit flush with the case. Grab the motherboard by the heatsink and lower it gently by aligning the IO shield with all the ports from the motherboard. Then you have to install the screws. You may have to push the motherboard slightly in order to align the holes before you start screwing them in. Do not over tighten them, just enough so that the motherboard doesn't move in place. Now it's time to install the power supply, so remove the final two thumb screws from the bottom of the case and slide off the panel. You will need four of these screws which came with the case. So flip the case upside down so that the bottom part is sticking out and insert the power supply. Make sure the power supply fan is facing out, or in other words it's facing down, and then go ahead and tighten all four of the screws. Next, we are going to install the Wi-Fi module so that you can connect your PC via Wi-Fi. This part is going to be really annoying and it requires your patience, so please don't rush it otherwise you can damage your motherboard. Grab the two gold-plated Wi-Fi connectors that come with the motherboard and remove the module from the motherboard by unscrewing it. Carefully grab the tip of the cables and connect each one of them to the module. These are extremely tiny and may take some time. You will hear a faint click if you do it correctly, and go ahead and do the same thing for the second cable. It doesn't really matter which one connects first or second. Both of them are the same. 
So this is what it looks like once it's installed. These do come off very easily, so try not to move them, otherwise they will come off and you will have to do this all over again. Gently lower the module back into the motherboard and screw it back in place. Again, trying to be very careful not to touch the cables because they will pop off easily. Next, grab two of the gold plated washers and place one on each connection. You can then proceed to insert them through the hole on the IO shield near the back of the case. Next, grab two of the gold plated nuts and tighten each one using your hand. Unfortunately, there isn't a tool that was provided, so you're just going to have to use your hands for these. Finally, grab both of the antennas and screw them both in. They don't tighten all the way and they might feel very loose, which is fine. Next, we're going to install the hard drives. There should be two more thumb screws holding the trays together. Now, if you're only installing one storage device, then remove only one of the trays. I will be showing you the process of installing both a hard drive and an SSD, depending on what you are putting in your PC. If you're installing a hard drive, you need four of these, which consists of four screws and four rubber grommets. If you're installing an SSD, you only need four of these tiny screws instead. Let's start with the hard drive installation. So grab four of the rubber grommets and insert them in the holes on the tray. Put them in the larger hole first and slide it in the smaller hole. If you did it correctly, the tray should be in between the rubber pieces. Repeat this for the other three holes. Grab your hard drive and with the sticker facing outwards, place it on the tray and align the holes on the hard drive with the rubber holes on the sides. Once they are aligned, screw them in. If you did it correctly, the drive should be nice and tight against the tray without any movement. The SSD installation is a lot easier. Just place it against the tray with the sticker facing out and align the holes on the back with the tray. Some SSDs have four holes and others have three like mine. So go ahead and screw them in and you are pretty much done. So now let's connect them to the PC. You're going to need one SATA data cable for each drive you are connecting. Your motherboard usually comes with two or more of these. Put back the trays but don't put in the thumb screw just yet. Locate the SATA ports on the motherboard which should look something like this and insert them into the slot. Again, one for each storage device that you are hooking up. Connect the other end of the SATA cables to the hard drive or SSD that you are installing. We also need to power the drives, so grab the SATA power cable that's connected to your PSU, which should look something like this, and plug it into the back of the hard drive or SSD as well. So this is what your hard drive or SSD should look like once you plug both of these cables in. One is for data and one is for power. You can then proceed to put back the thumb screws and tighten both of the trays back into the case. Next, we are going to hook up the case fans and the front panel ports. So grab the set of cables that look like this, which are connected to the case. We're going to hook up the case fan first. So grab the cable that looks like this with a black tip and plug it into the motherboard chassis fan header, which should be right next to the CPU fan header that we connected earlier. Next up, we are connecting these cables, which is the most annoying. But before we do that, look at your motherboard and locate the set of pins located panel one, which should be on the bottom right of the motherboard. The first cable we are connecting is the reset switch, so make sure the words are facing down and plug it in the third and fourth pins near the bottom, just like this. Next up is the power switch. You're going to plug this one right above the reset switch, again with the words facing down. The third cable is the HDD LED. Once again, make sure the words are facing down and plug this one in the first and second pins near the bottom. The last two cables are the power LEDs. The positive one goes in the first pin and the negative one goes in the second pin. Here is what it's supposed to look like on the top and you can pause the screen and make sure that your cables look just like the ones on the screen. And then here is what it's supposed to look like on the bottom. Again, you can pause the video and make sure yours match with what I have in my PC. As you can see, all the letters are facing downwards. Next cable we are plugging in is the audio which says, well, HD audio. The pins for this one are located near the bottom of the IO shield. So plug it in while the words are facing towards the IO shield as you can see in the video. The last cable we are connecting is for the USB 3.0 ports in the front and it looks something like this with the blue tip. Locate the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard which should be right below the 24 pin ATX socket. With the notch facing the right side, gently lower the plug and snap it in place. Now we are going to give some power to the CPU and motherboard. So first up is the CPU, so grab the power supply cable that has the words CPU on them and plug only one of the 4-pin connectors into the 4-pin socket located near the top of the motherboard, which should be right behind the IO shield. 
Next up is the 24 pin ATX cable and this one is pretty obvious where it goes. The only large socket on the motherboard which should be located on the right side. It's really important that these cables are fully seated guys otherwise your PC won't turn on. So make sure to apply some pressure if needed until the clip is fully hooked over. Finally let's install the graphics card. So pop open the cover near the back and remove the two screws that are holding the PCI brackets together. Gently lower the GPU down and apply some force until it snaps in place. The gold portion from the GPU should not be visible if it's fully seated. Make sure what you have on your PC matches with what you see on the screen. So once the GPU is fully seated, install both of the screws back on and put back the cover. Finally, we are going to plug in the PCI connector into the GPU. So grab the cable that looks like this and stick it inside the 6 pin slot on the GPU. So this is what your PC should look like after plugging everything in. Don't worry about the cable management just yet. We need to make sure the PC boots perfectly fine. Plug your PC into the wall outlet and hook up the monitor, keyboard and mouse and go ahead and boot it up. If it takes you to the BIOS screen then that means everything is working. If the GPU fan doesn't spin, don't freak out because that's normal. If your PC doesn't boot up or there's some errors popping up, make sure to go back through this entire tutorial and make sure you've connected everything correctly. So now that you know where everything is plugged in, take this time to work on cable management. You can unplug cables and route them in any way you like for a cleaner look. Here's what my PC looks like after I was done with the cable management. The best tip I can give you guys is to use velcro straps instead of zip ties because zip ties are more permanent and not as flexible as velcro straps and I'll drop a link to some velcro straps down below if you guys want to pick some up. Also use the bottom part of the case to store majority of the cables. As you can see I have a ton of cables wrapped up and hidden near the power supply. After all there is no clear side panel so you don't have to worry about them being visible. Once you are satisfied with the cable management, go ahead and put back all four of the side panels and screw them in. Alright, so now it's time to install Windows. You will need a 4GB flash drive and internet access on a different computer. First thing you need to do is visit the Microsoft website to download the Windows Media Tool. I did leave a link to it down below, so make sure to click on it and follow these steps. Step 2. Open the program and follow the steps. Click on create installation media for another PC and on the next page make sure all of the options match with what you see on my screen. If not, uncheck the box and change them. After hitting next, you will need to select where you want Windows to be installed on, so make sure to select the USB flash drive before hitting next again. Go ahead and select the USB drive from the list and hit next one more time and it will begin downloading. Depending on your internet speed, it can take up to 20 minutes to download, but once it's done, you should get a message stating that your USB drive is ready. So take out the USB drive and plug it into your new PC and turn it on. Continuously tap on the F11 key on your keyboard so that the boot menu comes up, and once you see this window, navigate to your USB flash drive and hit enter. What this does is it allows your PC to boot from the USB drive. So once the Windows screen shows up, follow the instructions until you reach the CD key prompt and here is where you need to enter the CD key for Windows 10. You can either pay full price for them or get them for like $40 from the Red Hat CD key swapper. I'll drop a link to it down below if anyone is interested. But wherever you get your CD keys from, just make sure it's the same version as the one you downloaded from the Microsoft site. So after putting in the CD key, it will take you to this screen. Make sure to select the custom option and this part is important guys. You need to select which drive you want Windows to be installed on. Obviously if you have an SSD, I would install it there because it would boot faster than any hard drive. So in my case, I chose my 1TB SSD to be my main operating system. Hit next and just wait for Windows to do its thing until it takes you back to the home screen. Now let's say it doesn't take you to the home screen and instead gives you one of the three options. 1. It reboots itself and takes you to the BIOS. 2. It reboots and takes you to the install page again. Or 3. It just reboots and then states that there is no operating system installed. If any of the three is happening to your PC, here is what you need to do to fix it. Reboot the PC and hit the delete key to get into the BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS, hit F6 to switch to advanced mode. If you have a different motherboard, it may be F7 or a different key. So once you're in the advanced tab, navigate to the boot menu near the top and switch your boot option number 1 to your drive that has the operating system installed on. In my case, I installed the operating system into my WD 1TB hard drive, so I selected the WDC option as number 1. 
Once you change that, hit F10 and restart your PC. It should either take you straight to the home screen of Windows if the installation is complete, or it will take you to where you left off on the installation process. So once you're at the home screen, you need to download the drivers, otherwise you will run into problems. Once again, I did leave links to the driver's homepage, so all you have to do is click on them and download the following. For the motherboard driver, you have to click on the download link, which is located on the left side, and then select the operating system. In my case, it's Windows 10, 64-bit, and then over here, you will need to download the following. Audio driver, Bluetooth driver, Intel management engine, and the LAN driver. Once those are downloaded and installed, you will need to download the graphics driver next. Again, I did leave a link to it down below. This one is very easy. Just visit the link and click on the download now. It should be under the automatically detect and install your driver tab. Remember that this is only for AMD graphics cards. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, you will need to install GeForce Experience instead from the Nvidia website. So once all the drivers are downloaded and installed, you may need to restart your PC and you're pretty much good to go. So if you're actually building a PC, congratulations for building your very own gaming PC. It took me a few days to get this video done for you guys, so I hope you find it useful. And if you're feeling awesome, dropping a like would really help out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.